Hi and welcome to the Web Weaving Practitioner Certification course. It's really nice to see you. Special welcome to the people who are watching from home. And for their benefit, I should explain that we've brought in an, an especially select group of people to uh, share this training experience with you. They've come from all over the world and next door. They've been specially selected because the backs of their heads are attractive. They're really used to uh, what we're talking about and uh, they clap loudly and they laugh uproariously at the slightest thing. Obviously that's not true. So <laughs> we'll, just see, we'll just do the best we can with what we've got. So we're really excited about what we're going to be doing um, over the course of this training because it gives us the opportunity to, to talk about what we've been teaching the last seven odd years to a worldwide audience. And the basis of it's going to be um, word weaving, our particular way of influencing people using hypnotic language. And within that, we're also going to be talking about the framework of cognitive hypnotherapy, our approach to the use of modern interpretations of trance with techniques from NLP and other places as well. So we're going to be using the framework that we first talked about. And what you can see on your screen is a little icon to remind me to remind you that you will be able to download at this particular moment a PDF of a workbook that will take you through all of the screens that we're going to be using in this particular chapter. So if I explain to you that over the course of this training, you're going to be viewing five different chapters, which all explain different aspects of word weaving, which finally leave you to the test that will certify you and we'll be sending you a nice, pretty certificate at the end of it. At this particular moment, whenever you see this icon, you'll be able to download something that should be showing on your screen right now. The guys here obviously have got it in front of them, so they'll be referring to it as they go. Now, having read Word Weaving Volume 1, you'll already know that there are three specific steps to achieving um, your goal of creating language patterns specifically aimed at your client. And those three things are aiming su the suggestion, the use of trance phenomena, and linguistic framing. Each one of those is of particular interest to us in cognitive hypnotherapy because of the ideas that science has taught us about the way we, should, we might be moving forward in therapy that would be really effective. What we're going to start with, as you would expect in chapter one, is about aiming the suggestion. And when I talk about this, I'm going to begin with a question. And that question is, why does a suggestion need a name in the first place? Why would it matter? And this actually really goes to the heart of hypnotic suggestion, I think in general anyway, because this guy here, Milton Erickson, really changed the whole face of hypnotherapy when he first began practicing. As his model evolved, he was working completely opposite to what the received wisdom of the field was. And really that received wisdom hasn't really left the mainstream, even though... He okay, hi Rebecca. Hello. So, how can I help you today? Um, oh, well really it's sort of in the area of relationships, sort of a problem I have with relationships, both with my husband and it's something that's happened lots of times before in relationships with friends as well. Okay. I, I don't really know how to describe it. I guess it's that I can't let get people get too close to me without me pushing them away. Oh, right. okay. So I really reject them basically so I can have this fantastic relationship in the beginning and we get on really well and then it get to a point and then I just have to push them away and it's something that I sort of seem to keep doing all the time and it's getting to the point now within my marriage where I really need to sort it out otherwise it's going to happen all over again yeah. and, and when you say this has happened on a number of occasions how far back can you remember this being a problem um Probably from about my early 20s, it happened first of all with a girlfriend that I had where we had this really sort of intense, good, fun relationship and it got to a point and then I just sort of had to get away from it. So it started then and then it happened in all my sort of relationships with men as well and it's getting worse and worse and worse as I get older. Right, okay. And so before that, that relationship with your girlfriend, it wasn't an issue? 